Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to another installment of the Kettle One Botanical Spritz Society. We've been bringing you fun and floral tips and tricks all year long. And today, we not only have Joe and Taryn joining us to talk about all the pool party particulars you need to know to host a successful poolside event, but we also have Dennis Tamps and Bob Nolette from Kettle One itself here to talk to us about how we got all of the delicious Kettle One products, but especially these ones. I'm very excited about this. I don't know if you can tell. Um, and before I turn it over to Bob to tell us how the products are made, how uh, dis the distillation of Kettle One, the history behind Kettle One, their very special connection with bartenders. Uh, I just want to say, Bob, you cannot get this one wrong because from what I understand, Carl and Corey are watching. That's right. That's Bob and Carl's parents, 10th generation maker of Kettle One. Uh, so oh, make sure make sure you got this one down, Bob. So. <laughs> Bob, tell us the story. Tell us a little bit about Kettle One, its history, production methods, and how we got from Kettle One, the Kettle One we all know and love, to the botanical line, the inspiration, and how you decided on those delicious flavors. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I have to watch my uh, language uh, and uh, behave, but it is also, I mean, it's that Dennis uh, has to do that. So uh, we'll see him a little later. Um, yeah, Kettle One Vodka, everybody uh, knows it uh, in the States, but it all started very, very small. Uh, early uh, 80s, uh, my father, uh, who uh, went to uh, his first trip to San Francisco, and basically uh, he, he looked around and then saw uh, what the States uh, was about and, and I was wondering what kind of distilled product could we make from our small family distillery in Schiedam that could make a difference for, for us in Schiedam, but also would make a difference in the uh, United States. He was served, uh, to basically uh, make a long story short, he was served a vodka martini in a certain hotel bar. And uh, the vodka that was used was, was by itself very harsh. And he found out that basically all the import vodkas were harsh. Uh, and that brought him to an idea, if this martini should you know, be made better, the vodka needs to be better. So he went back to the distillery, started to work on uh, a better quality, uh, looking at the, the column stills, extremely important uh, uh, part, of course, uh, for uh, a, a grain neutral spirit. And he looked at uh, the pot stills. Pot still number one was uh, the oldest still, was still the oldest still in our distillery. He uh, also made that part of the distillation. Together with the column still and part of that pot still, he found the, uh, yeah, the, the recipe that Caravan is known for today, the quality of it. So he got the, the, the crispiness, the, the, the clean vodka taste, but also uh, a little bit part of the pot still that actually gives you that mouthfeel and that length. And that is why Caravan is uh, you know, the number one recommended bar, uh, the number one recommended vodka bar bartenders around the world. Uh, the research within the top 50 best bars around the world always gets Caravan to, uh, to be number one. In the last nine years in that research, Caravan is the most recommended. So uh, we have the, yes, the, the, the liquid in the bottle that makes a difference. Um, and that is how it all started. My father went with my brother to a big restaurant in San Francisco first bottle of Kettle One, first tasting. We asked the owner uh, and bartender what his favorite vodka was. They compared the two on room temperature and he fell in love with Kettle One. And that's how uh, the story started. Uh, today we do still the same so many years later. Basically the only thing we do, we reach out to bartenders, please take a bottle of Kettle One, taste it on room temperature against any vodka that you have in your bar and you will find out that Caravan can actually make your cocktail, your martini, better because the, the taste of your ingredients will go on a, on a long ride with Caravan and others will just 
drop that basically in uh, in your glass. That is uh, that's uh, how it is. If you look at uh, the products that we currently make at our family distillery, we started in 1691. My brother, myself, are now the 11th generation. My father is still every day at the distillery. My mom also I had a whole day with my mom today about the interior design of everything we do at the distillery. Uh, but also, um, what we actually distill has to be different than anything that is ever distilled before. That is sort of the philosophy of uh, my dad. Uh, never walk the same path of any other uh, product, but always try to, to create something that is really new, that is never done before. If you look at Kettle One, that was never done before, that people actually, somebody looked at the quality and made that better. If you look at our gin, the ingredients there are so different than ever, ever used before. And we, we distilled that uh, now maybe more than 15 years ago. Today, there are thousands of different gins out there that you know try to find their way. Uh, but we were one of the, the first that actually used you know, new ingredients that never were used before. And if you look at the botanicals, that's why we're here today, the Caterpillar Botanical line, we really created a whole new category. For the first time in the history of spirits, rum, whiskey, cognac, vodka, all of it, tequillas, we never got to a point that we could compete with that white wine moment, that the rosé moment, that, that choice that people do at the table when they have lunch. They, they go for the obvious easy, yeah, yeah I'll give you a, a glass of white wine. But now we have a, a kettle on spritz. We have a kettle on line that if you look at the packaging, you just want to taste it because you just look at it and say, wow, I want to taste this. Um, so we have seen since we, we launched that kettle on botanical actually can compete with that moment. And that is where the big opportunity is. If you take a white wine glass full of ice, you add uh, one of the uh, kettle on uh, varietals in it, whatever they choose uh, and actually the, the label tells you what you're getting if you want a peach it's peach and yeah? the the, um, the grapefruit and rose you taste grapefruit and rose so the consumer actually gets what they 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 think they're getting with white wine or rosé you never know if it's really good or not so uh, and then uh, you add uh, soda water you add a beautiful piece of uh, fruit and you serve it like that, and uh, people just you know, look at it and wow, they uh, they like it. It's very low in ABV. Uh, it's it's extremely low in calories uh, compared to white wine, forty percent less. So it is that you know that moment that we can actually uh, offer something else from a spirit side that can compete to the white wine. So that was the vision that we had. And if you look at uh, the three varietals, we always get a lot of questions: why these three and why these combinations? But actually, uh, my uh, my father loves peach. Today we had a tasting. He says, "Oh wow, you know, the nose on the, on the, on the peach is just incredible." Uh, that is his you know, favorite uh, fruit. My brother loves the uh, the grapefruit, and that is has a long history when we were kids. My uh, one of my grandfathers uh, on my mother's side always served my brother one little piece of a grapefruit with some sugar when he was a child and he uh, loved it. And we all came out of World War II. We don't talk about that, uh, but uh, all these ingredients, all these fruits were very scarce or not available. So that little treat was something that uh, my brother always uh, remembered that he got them. Never two, only just one. So he <laughs> comes back. And for me, uh, I have something uh, with uh, cucumbers. Can't stand eating it. Uh, but uh, we, uh, we managed to make a, a liquid that is just uh, incredible. Uh, and uh, I fell in love with, uh, with that flavor. But uh, I still can't eat it, but uh, I can uh, definitely drink it. And then uh, we, uh, we, of course, looked at uh, the whole market. Bartenders are, for us, the number one... Uh, source that uh, we uh, we go to always and, uh, and and 
hopefully they uh, they love our products and uh, we engage with them and Dennis will uh, will also elaborate on that with the world class program the better drinking the hive the community and I'll explain that um, but for the consumer at home and then the pool side and that's what we're going to talk about that of course I love to see that we actually serve a fresh Catawan botanical out of the bottle but the uh, convenience in the states uh, yeah we're asking us please can you bring the spritz to uh, in in the can and uh, we did we uh, we created something really really special again soda low calories uh, and um, yeah it's just flying off the shelf and uh, the packaging again is uh, is really in my opinion incredible not only because I'm part of that, and my father and my brother too, that decide on what it looks like. But um, it is just gorgeous. Uh, and it just, if you look at it, you say, wow, I want to taste this. So uh, I agree is, with you. Very long story in, in just a few minutes. Uh, well, the, these do indeed look. Oh, sorry, Dennis. Sorry, these do sorry, indeed Brittany. look beautiful uh, and they taste very good. Uh, best summer drink is always something that you can reach for when it's cold and it's really hot outside and you have gotten all of the delicious flavors of kettle one botanical in these cans i did really like the cucumber it meant it's your favorite but you're not a person who eats cucumbers um my fiance jesse is also a person who he's not gonna like get cucumber on like a salad or anything but the cucumber mint is his favorite <laughs> okay and to it out. like i pull it out like oh. <laughs> There's something to this. Yeah. Well, Dennis, I know that you do a lot of work with Kettle One in the capacity of keeping this focus on bartenders, where where this all started, you know? And I know, um, obviously, our friends at Kettle One are a huge part of Diageo's World Class series. Um, and world class is actually happening right now. Uh, and so the US champion, Adam Horner, um, his concept, his hive, way to uh, give back through creating drinks and give back through partnering with Kettle One. Um, so fresh and so clean, just taking things that you're not using anymore, can't use them, and turning them into these really delicious cocktail syrups. Uh, but Dennis, I'm going to let you take this away because I know this is your day in, day out, is helping bartenders and helping them make the world a better place. So you go ahead. Yeah, I will. thank you very much, Brittany. Um, uh, Bob, you're yeah, the flying off shelves probably because of the calorie content, no? Uh, the very low in calories. So uh, I wanted to uh, say that. And, and one thing before I go on world class, I love the, the guilt-free part of the botanicals. It's something that we never thought about. Uh, we are, yeah. Uh, uh, vodka drinkers and, and, and gin drinkers um, and then suddenly people were saying oh yeah uh, I can have this on a Wednesday uh, th th that's okay and I was like oh, yeah, never thought about that but that, yeah it is you know the earlier in the day you can actually at lunch you can actually uh, pop a little can uh, and, and, and enjoy yourself and there's this hardly any uh, calories and uh, definitely it's, it's low in, in alcohol as well so anyway while I'm here uh, uh bec basically um uh, bob and i uh now you saw us uh, before on in the prep basically in the prep room and uh, we joke around but we also always talk about business and thinking of if a vodka brand like ours so a family made brand uh, that is so loved by the industry what do you do if if you want to give back basically so what do you do in the next 20 years so everybody was slowly starting to talk about uh, sustainability. And that is a, an amazing thing and super important. Um, but we wanted to, because sustain, sustainability is more something that we do in the distillery, but uh, to work with our friends, the bartenders, we wanted to do something else. Um, and a, a little a little back, it's almost 100 years, feels like it. I'm 10 years in the company. And before that, I was uh, uh, behind the mahogany. I love that uh, Gary Regan phrase there. I don't know if... Some of you know Gary Regan, um, uh, may uh, God have his soul. Um, but um, uh, so I was in the bar industry. So I love that, um, that, that we have that connection. And I thought, yeah, you know, chefs have this huge 
uh, a visual, basically. You know, everybody looks up to the chef, but not, not a lot of people look up to the bartenders. And I thought we need to change that. Um, so uh, Bob and I, uh, I think about four or five years ago, were in Mexico City. Uh, next week, actually, World Class is, is live. In um, uh, This time it's on air, so it's everywhere, which is beautiful as well. We we miss out on the, on our favorite trip of the year, but uh, it is um, it is there. Uh, 49 countries, if I'm not mistaken, and from the United States, uh, straight from Los Angeles, Adam uh, is doing the so fresh and so clean uh, for Kettle One. But that happened because four years ago, Bob and I was uh, watching a bartender in uh, Mexico City uh, during a, a Max Ego round, Kevin Patnot, who is actually uh, also from the United States, but living in uh, Turkey, Istanbul, or Istanbul, Turkey. And uh, we saw him talking as, as the only bartender, not talking about CO2 emissions, uh, but actually talking about, oh, how can I bring my industry together? Uh, and then his, his uh, principle was the hive. Uh, uh, he figured out that the bee would travel seven kilometers. Sorry about that. I only know in, in the European uh, metrics here. Um, after 10 years, I still didn't learn. Sorry, Mr. Nolet, uh, you will kick my ass tomorrow, probably, for this. Thanks, Bob, for inviting your father. Um, <laughs> But, uh, uh, but he elaborated that seven kilometers, uh, uh, a bee would fly to, to find his, uh, uh, his pollen, basically, uh, and then go back to the hive. And, and he, he draw a line around his bar of seven kilometers, and he tried to uh, uh, work together with bars and restaurants. And it, and it was, now Bob and I were both in the same room at the same time, which was a coincidence, uh, very much so, but uh, we looked at each other and, 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 you know, and suddenly it clicked. So uh, we thought, okay, this is it. This is this is something. This is a beautiful story. It's sort of a romantic story as well. But it, imagine you're sipping a cocktail, or you're sipping one of those at the at the, at the, at the poolside. You want to know something about this, you know? You you don't want to know that CO two emissions are up again this year. That's not maybe not the story if you want to sip such a fresh, nice drink. Um, so, but the story of Kevin was super beautiful and was talking about botanicals, hives, and, 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 and the things that bartenders could do. Now, a very long story short, uh, we started to ask bartenders for the uh, world, uh, I wanted to say World Cup, because we were talking about soccer before. I want to go in there because no one, none of you know what soccer is all about. It's a crazy sport that we love in, in Europe. Um, but uh, uh, we, we started to ask Bart, and so if you, if you look around in your own community, maybe just look at your neighbor in your street. Uh, maybe your neighbor needs help uh, uh, buying groceries, you know, because she has something. And so you could help her out with the bar team, make a little schedule and, and just one every other day, uh, help her out and, and, and you make the community better. Uh, because I strongly believe that bartenders are at the heart of the community. So uh, we actually did. And um, six weeks later, we were all meeting up in, in Berlin for the world class finals. Uh, actually, a day before the real final started it, because this was such a different thing that we started out. Um, very long story short, um, there were 50, 50 bartenders in the room. And a half an hour later, everybody was crying because it was such an amazing uh, a feeling that uh, the Philippine Philippine guy won. And he said, and I will never forget, uh, he said, um, I thought that serving somebody a beautiful drink was the highest I could ever achieve, but it could actually change 300 people or 300 families, uh, their life uh, with a project that you guys made, basically set me up to. Um, now, a uh, few years later, uh, now suddenly we, we did a similar thing. Uh, we asked the bartenders from, uh, from 49 countries. We said, okay, look at your community. Um, what can you do? What, just a plan. You don't have to do anything. Just uh, think about the community. What can you do to change it for the better? Yeah? And not changing, just changing it for the better, but also make your drink better. So if I say make your drink better, for just to give an example, um, everything in, the la in my period uh, working in the bar industry, which is you know, more than 30 years now, um, Everything is changed. All the products are much better than before. And we now have much more knowledge. The internet, of course, helped to spread the word. I mean, this is amazing. We're talking to each other while I'm here in Amsterdam. Bob is in, 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 in Schiedam. His parents are like 50 meters from Bob, but on, on their own account. And, and, and I don't actually know where you are at the moment, Brittany. But, uh, Alabama. You got to come Alabama. visit. Alabama. You got to come amazing. visit. Amazing. Yeah. I can't <laughs> wait. Um, 
So it, it is quite amazing. Um, and now I completely lost my story there. Um, oh yeah, and so everything is changed, but one thing isn't, and that is actually the sugar content. So we make these beautiful cocktails and it's strange to talk about sugar while there's no sugar in this. So don't, this is about cocktails uh, people, not about our beautiful botanical series because we don't use any sugar. Um, but uh, in the cocktail, of course, there's always the content of sugar and it's white refined sugar that doesn't give you anything but just sweetener. So I, at one point being busy with this, and that's the beauty of going a direction in your mind, I guess, I was like, so we're trying to help the environment, making uh, communities better. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is save the bee because otherwise we have a huge problem even with our botanical series because otherwise you don't have any herbs anymore. Um, so I thought, why not change the white refined sugar for raw honey, which gives you complexity. It will give you beautiful stories of locality. Uh, chefs use it already for for years, but we don't in the bar, and that would help a lot. You know, you, you help an industry. I mean, beekeepers don't make a lot of money, but because people tend to go to the supermarket, nothing against supermarkets, but often it is a sort of a, a mixture from China, unfortunately, that you that you buy if you think you buy honey. Um, so your local uh, uh, beekeeper gives you something beautiful that makes your cocktails better, and in the end. If Brittany, if one day I come to Alabama and we drink a martini, our drink will be better because the bartender has a, has a beautiful story. So a very long story, but um, yeah, as I like to uh, say, little nuggets of hope is what we're for. Well, and you can see how much of an impact it's made because now it's continued on from you know, placing importance on honey and taking care of bees and beekeepers. And now this year, our US world-class champion uh, is focusing on repurposing these ingredients that would otherwise go to waste and making them into these beautiful syrups that once again, make your community better and make your cocktails better. So I love the project. I love the project every year getting to see what new good comes from it just makes my heart happy. So thank you both so much for investing so much into the bartending community because bartenders, we love we love y'all and we love Kettle One. So thanks for loving us all back. It's <laughs> um, definitely mutual. But speaking of people who make cocktails better and the world a better place, we are in fact here to talk about pool parties and we have two people who fit that bill here with us today. So Bob, Dennis, any, not final words for the people, any words for the people before Joe and Taryn tell us how to be the best pool party host the world has ever seen? Yeah, we hope we get a good summer here in Holland. Uh, we don't have that every year, so uh, we definitely will uh, listen to all the tips if we would have a nice <laughs> summer. Uh, and we, we pray for a good summer. So uh, we'd love to hear... Uh, all the ideas that uh, that you have uh, from uh, from your side. Well, now I'm very excited to, if there's a nice summer, attend a pool party in Holland, because I know it's going to be great, because it's going to be based off of Joe, Taryn, your tips. So um, Joe and Taryn are our Spirit Society personalities for the month of June. So you have probably seen some lovely videos uh, that they filmed. Um, you've probably seen some carousels full of tips and tricks for making delicious botanical spritzes or hosting your friends or your guests at the pool. Um, so we're very, very lucky to have these two. Joe uh, is the reigning champion of all things fun and poolside <laughs> when it comes to New Orleans, Louisiana. And it. Taryn <laughs> just brings us a hot pink dream on a daily basis, also poolside in Nashville. So Joe and Taryn, I am going to turn it over to you to tell the people how to have a pool party that makes a splash. Yes. Taryn, you're up <laughs> first because you have a lot of great information that I love to hear first. <laughs> so I think it's a little different, obviously, when you have uh, guests at your pool as opposed to like just friends. Uh, so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of really important particulars. Uh, one thing being no glass, obviously. Um, glass can ruin somebody's day really quickly. Uh, I work at uh, White Limousine in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a uh, Dolly Parton themed bar and it's all pink and the ladies love it. 
Um, so we have to make sure that we take care of them, you know? <laughs> um, Joe, you have a pool in your backyard, don't you? I do. <laughs> um, I'm really spoiled. I found a really great apartment that has a pool and it helps me beat the heat here in New Orleans. But one of the biggest things is I like to share that with my friends and my community, like my community being like all the people I know in the bigger world. But what are the specifics of working at a bar that has a pool? Well, everybody is there to have a good time. I think much like uh, any pool in the world. <laughs> uh, so we have to make sure, you know, we're, we're taking care of them. Uh, we reserve the pool out so it's small groups um, so we can uh, provide a better level of service for them. Uh, these ladies are on vacation. Uh, they are bacheloretting in Nashville. Uh, so we have to make sure they eat. We have to make sure that they get snacks. But it is hot up there, as Brittany asked earlier. It has reached mid-90s here in Nashville, and we're 12 floors up. So it gets pretty It gets pretty hot up there. <laughs> so we got to make sure we're giving everybody water and, and everybody's hydrating because that's part of the fun. Nobody's I'm having fun when they have a headache. <laughs> No. I have been, uh, I've had the privilege of seeing these slides before the class and I really appreciated that so many of the tips that are coming up in these slides, Taryn, are like, <laughs> you will be having a bad time if you don't consider <laughs> safety, let me help you. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's where like my mama tea comes in. <laughs> I just want to make sure that, you know, it's a long day. It's a uh, marathon, not a sprint. Uh, so we have to take our time. Uh, we have to make sure we eat. Uh, that's part of the reason why I uh, made the garnish that I did because it's edible and it's really important that um, garnishes are functioning, but they, you know, are also fun. Uh, as far as, yeah, no glass. We already said that. <laughs> uh, food is so important. Uh, we have like a lot of like light bites, a lot of like cool cold salads. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, a little protein in your in your diet. Uh, I also really appreciate that you and your team think about the fact that like, as humans, when we get in the pool, it's like we forget everything we've ever known. <laughs> so like being like, food, would you like a food? I think it is time for a food. Here's some food anyway. I think right. that's a good call. Because it's like, as soon as you put your body in water, you're just like, everything's great. Nothing matters anymore. Right. I think, you know, we've all been there where we're like, all right, now I'm already having fun. So I don't have to, I don't have to eat. I'll eat later. And then it just gets put off and put off. And then, you know, I've definitely been that person before where I'm like, why am I upset now? Oh, cause I'm hangry. I'm hangry, <laughs> I'm hangry and I'm hot. <laughs> I, I love this. That tip, though. <laughs> food is paramount to keeping everyone in a, in a nice mood. So Absolutely. Make sure you have food for your guests. Have to. You have to. Uh, so obviously we have frozen drinks upstairs. Uh, we have two nice machines that make our lives easy. Uh, Got to make sure they're clean and, and, uh, and maintained, obviously. Um, make big old batches of them for the ladies. We have a frozen lychee martini and a frozen Aperol Spritz, which are delicious. Um, but we also, you know, it's important that people know how much sugar are in these drinks as well. Uh, they're definitely a lot stronger. Well, uh, see, this is where you can we can swap them out, though. They have a frozen lychee martini, got, and then you give them the Kettle One Botanical Vodka Spritz, which doesn't have any sugar in it, and it's absolutely. a little bit lower ABV. And then you're like, okay, now we're striking yep. a balance We're here. balancing it out here with the, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, the frozen drinks are super important, but the balance to them is as well. Uh, you, I, they're going to be in huge demand. So you have to be ready to crank them out for Absolutely. sure. Which like you said, having, you know, ready to go, uh, kettle one spritzes are amazing because it's a good, uh, time buffer. <laughs> Absolutely. You're like, it, no, it, your other 97 frozen drinks will be ready soon. But in the meantime, this is, this is actually what you need right now. You need to. We need to take a step down, yep. <laughs> fill on the sugar for a minute. You're running around the pool like a four-year-old. Like, let's yeah, have taking let's all have of the sugar. pictures. <laughs> yeah, let's have some sugar-free time, some low ABV time. Absolutely. Also, this gives me time to clean and reset this mess that I made trying to get these lychee martinis ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, I mean, they're in demand. 
and they're delicious. So it's it's been great doing the frozen drinks for everybody upstairs. Uh, it definitely ties into you know the next step, which would be the fun that we're going to have up there. And I mean, I think you have to be having fun in order for your guests to be having fun. So it's important to take care of yourself as well. Yeah. Um, I, there's nothing that will kill a vibe, like one person at a party who's just having a bad time. So like, if it's your party, don't be that person. Everybody's just trying <laughs> to spritz and have a good time. So whether it's your party that you're working on at work or at home, take care of yourself. Like Taryn Absolutely. said, listen to Taryn. She's very smart. <laughs> I'm very safe. <laughs> it's all about safety. <laughs> I love that about you. <laughs> okay, so uh, the the cocktail uh, garnish that I did, like I said earlier, is uh, edible. So I found radishes and I sliced them very thin, very safely, uh, and I rolled them into a flour. Uh, with a uh, ginger candy in the center. So it's a nice little bite, a nice little like kind of spicy bite to go with the rose and grapefruit, which is delicious by the way. This picture is just like, I feel like this is like a, it's giving me a lot of better homes and gardens vibes. Like <laughs> I am so obsessed with this little radish rose and I would absolutely eat that if it was on the top of my drink, but then I'd be sad afterwards because I would miss it. I can always get you another one. <laughs> That's what I love about you, Taryn. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so this obviously said earlier, the bar that I work at is beautiful um, and people are dying to get in there. So they're very happy to be there. You can sense it when they come in. It's the oohs and the ahs. And so it's really important that you, you know, keep that going. Uh, and so, you know, just be happy to have them. It's been a, you know. It's good, it's good to have them. <laughs> I imagine uh, a lot of people are both feeling the need to be like, yes, we should take care of ourselves. And also, oh my gosh, yes, it's so good to see you uh, at this yeah. point in the last, uh, I, don't, I feel like it's still all the same year. It's just been the same year for a really long time. <laughs> but, well, the bar yeah. is beautiful and I can't think of a more beautiful place to enjoy a botanical spritz. I mean, especially if you're there, come on now. I mean, it just goes. It, it, it goes. It just, it, it just goes. It just works. <laughs> what do we have next? Or next, we got okay. Joe, the Joe's Tips hosting at home. So Taryn yeah. is giving you the lowdown on taking care of your guests and yourself if you are hosting at a bar that is poolside. Joe, you're going to tell us how to have our own pool parties at our homes and not blow it, yeah. right? Exactly. So if you were there for the Instagram shout out, I did give a peek of this pool uh, with Brittany, but that is my backyard. That is me having a party. It's me. Um, what you don't see is like the table full of pizza because I like, for me, it's really important like to get that stew going and get a stew, like treat it like a stew. Like you put in your spicy components, your savories, your sometimes a little hint of sweet. Like you always want to have different people that will like compare and contrast because it keeps it interesting. I mean, if you don't want all carrots, like that could be fun, but not always. So like make sure you invite a lot of different people to keep everyone engaged. Uh, what was my next slide? Oh, yes, this is really important. I like to have all sorts of beverages because not everyone is imbibing in stronger libations. Some people are just doing the soda water. Some people are doing a beautiful kettle one vodka spritz in a can. And I like having those options so that way people can enjoy themselves where they're comfortable. Or if you wanna get real dangerous with it, you can have people bring what they like to drink to the party. Also, it saves you some money. And as we saw in the earlier classes, budget is key. So our, our friends, the cocktail bandits reminded us of that. You gotta, gotta stay on budget to have a good time. So it's true. Uh, okay. I, I'll be honest. I am a little controlling a little bit because <laughs> I, <laughs> I have mama tendencies as well. And I, one thing for me is music is super important to me. And either I have music that I've chosen with a specific vibe 
or I have someone who I trust to have con that control and I can delegate that. But you never want someone to come in and be like, oh, let me play a song and it's Cotton Eye Joe. Because <laughs> it'll throw everything off. And that's really, it's, part of that stew is like, keep the temperature right, slow and low, or you want a fast boil, you want to pop off. And music is a really great way to cause that. So don't let someone like spoil the stew. You keep your control. I love that you're nodding, Brittany, because you know exactly what I'm saying. I, I do, and but it is important because like all of the things are part of the vibe, right? So then if somebody, if all of a sudden, you've got six different people plugging in phones one after the other, everything's all over the place. And then everyone is confused. Everybody's like, I don't know what kind of party I signed up for. I do know there's a pool. So I guess technically it's a pool party, but the rest of it is very unclear. Is this our pool party and cry to Taylor Swift day? I guess that is. <laughs> I didn't read that part of the invitation, but I guess that's what we're doing. I guess we're doing this. Um, yeah. Uh, a thing I always think about too is like, my bathrooms are in my house, so you have to, we can bring up that slide, Mr. Producer. Inside it, oh, oh that's really small. Inside it, so like I have a couple different TVs that are playing different visuals. I have like incense, I have an oil diffuser, I have <laughs> other music going in the house. Like if you're not living the full spa experience when you walk through my bedroom to get to the bathroom, I'm not doing it right. Um, I always <laughs> have like toilet, extra toilet paper even in the times of the pandemic, like I somehow got lucky and always could get like the giant pack from Target. So I'm always stocked up. Uh, I always put a towel or a rug in front of the door so you're not getting watery paths through the house. You don't want to damage your hardwood or your carpets, uh, things like that. Just visual treats, good smells, all things that I think we don't always think about when we're hosting at home, but they are very great keys to ensuring a great time. What was my final, what's my final thought, producer? Yes, we both, like, Taryn and I, went, as we were talking about this, food is so important. And it really is something that seals the deal. And it can be super fancy. You can have full charcuterie spreads. You can do all that. You can just order pizza. But you just want to have something because if you're going to be out there drinking, you're going to be in the sun, you're going to be doing stuff, you're going to need something to like support your body. And so food is really, really key. Um, I'm very partial. Lately, I've been on a grill kick again. So I just keep grilling veggies and meats. And I always grill veggies first, then meats. So that way my vegetarian and vegan friends don't get something that has been cross-contaminated. So always take care of your friends. So I, love that. I love that note. Like you, you got to know people's dietaries. Like you just have to. Someone may be allergic to cheese and that is very sad and I am sad for them, but I'm not going <laughs> to make you eat charcuterie. <laughs> um, next slide. I am please. back. I was having an eyelash issue, but it's oh, fixed no. now. <laughs> next slide, please. Oh, it's me in a wig. Hey, by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's really, Taryn said it, I'll reiterate, relax. It's no good if you're not having fun. That's a hard lesson I had to learn myself because I get too caught up in, is everyone having a good time? I don't have a good time. And I have started learning to just be like, yo, we're here. You're enjoying some beautiful grapefruit rose in a can. It's cool. It's cool, baby. You got a stew going. And you just enjoy yourself. Janae, yes, Janae. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I am hosting a pool party for my coworkers for the 4th of July. And I know I, I'm such a giver. You are. But it's just an excuse to have people over and I love it. After this past year, I am starved for attention <laughs> in my home. So I want people to come to my home so I can entertain and give them the hospitality that we give at work. I don't think you would have to bribe people with any sort of particular party to have them come over and hang out with you, but also the pool is there. So like might as well. Right. Right. Um, I really love that the way that you to approach this, because a lot of your points are similar that, or they overlap in some way. Right. So it's like, you need to have food. You need to have food. If you, 
if you don't plan on having food, maybe having people near a pool when there's going to be alcohol available is like, maybe this is not the right time for that. Um, and you need to like consider safety and you need to consider, you know, the way that your guests experience the space. So Taryn, for you, you know, it's like as a staff, we need to take care of ourselves and each other. And we need to make sure we're thinking through the elements of what we're doing so that we're in a good mood so that everybody else is having fun. And Joe, you know, for you, you're like, we got to create these environments that are that are exciting and fun, but comfortable at the same time and make sure that nobody is like twisting the cap off the salt and just dumping it in the stew. Like we can't have that. And I think <laughs> it's really interesting to look at that from the two different perspectives of like, whether or not you're hosting a pool party at your home or you work at a poolside bar, like that so much of this is so fundamental. And it's like, if you can check off this list, then like the rest of it will just kind of fall into place as people start swimming. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I know all I want to do right now is go get in the pool. Like I, I could just go right now and get in the pools. And I appreciate that about both of you. Um, so let's bring, oh no, we gotta talk about Joe's drink before we do anything else. So much like Taryn, I love edible garnishes. Like I like using candy, I like using little pastry treats. So mine, uh, the out indoor edition, wine glass, beautiful. And then with roses, cause I like, you can always add extra things to things. Uh, fresh basil for the aromatic, a jelly grapefruit candy and then a rose water macaroon, like, ugh. I love a little crunch, a little soft chew, a like great herbal nose. All of those things really play together with the beautiful grapefruit rose flavor. And then in a can, I like, put some candy on it. Like you cannot go wrong with adding a little candy to the party. I will take it every time. Anyone, if I'm at your bar or your home, you can always garnish my drink with literally any kind of candy you like and I will be greatly appreciative. I love incorporating snacks though in those small ways like both of you did because it's like, I'm not gonna let you get around putting some food inside of your body. I'm just <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna put it in all the places you expect and don't necessarily <laughs> expect. Yep. Gotta jumpstart that. that appetite. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's bring our, our friends, Bob and Dennis back. Let's see how they feel about, uh, about macarons being, at, being used as a garnish, radishes being used as a garnish for the vodka spritzes. Have you, have you seen these applications before? Are you really excited to see all of these like fun treats kind of incorporated into this really beautiful product that y'all have made? Yeah, I leave it up to Dennis because I'm not a bartender. <laughs> Garnishing with a with a slice of uh, lemon, lime, or, or grapefruit, or uh, something like that is uh, is already uh, a big task. So, uh, <laughs> with, uh, stuff on it, it's more uh, or that his side. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> No, but he's been older than me, so I'm not sure if he's still there. Oh, you start about that again. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, I'm older, so no, nothing about that. No, uh, amazing uh, presentation. Uh, really lo uh, love to see what you guys are doing. Uh, uh, at moments, I was like, Joe, I'm coming over soon. <laughs> and, oh, I will. And, and, and I will tell you, we did everything we could to keep the sugar out and you're just tossing sugar around it. Like, um, what are we doing here? Although I love the macarons, of course. So yeah, it's a, it's a difficult thing. Somebody twisting my arm, I would eat them, of course. But um, <laughs> um, now yeah, we, eating and drinking and drinking water is of course vital. Anybody that is serious in the bar industry should know we have to take care of our customers, uh, friends, I always treat people like they're used to because it's 10 years ago. But if uh, my last uh, bartending um, um, night was actually, of course, taking care of people. You know, you would not mess around in my bar because I would definitely kick you out if you would misbehave because I feel that if I'm behind the, hub, behind the bar, you are in my home. Uh, you will get the best treatment. I think you will all uh, align with that, I guess. Um, Absolutely. And, 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 the, and the other thing is, can the holiday start, please? I mean, seeing the swimming pools, I mean, I was 
I know. I was drifting away in my mind. Oh my God, so good. Amazing. Well, before we get into all of the housekeeping stuff, we do have a couple of questions. So Ooh. I'm going to toss those over to, these are all specifically related to pool parties. I think that y'all did, Dennis, Bob, y'all did an excellent job talking about the release of the botanical. But we do have some pool party related questions. So Joe, Taryn, whichever one wants to answer this, both. Um, what's your favorite vessel for poolside drinks other than this can? Hmm. Ooh, that's it. I am really lucky and we live in New Orleans and we have these things called go cups and they are plastic cups that uh, are at weddings, at birthday parties. They're thrown at you from floats during carnival parades. I have thrown them during my parade. So I love a good go cup. Uh, sadly, I have none near me, but they're just like, Great, it's better than like a disposable cup because you can reuse them, they're dishwasher safe, so you're helping the environment. And you just get them every year and you kind of have your stack and it's perfect. I love a Go Cup. I love a Go Cup cocktail. Absolutely. I think I have a lot of those too. Just like, you know, take with you, little Go Cups. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just to, like a nice sturdy plastic cup is fine for me but i also like the um the cold drink things that you can slide those cans into and it like keeps it cold for like hours and the uh the spritz fits in it it's perfect oh it's like great. the it's like the metal kind of koozie things yeah and it like suctions ones. yeah yeah they're yeah. great they keep it cold forever and i know uh if and when I'm going to say when, not if. When you make your way over to the Portland Cocktail Week Instagram page to look at some of the carousels full of tips from Taryn and Joe, you will see a tip from Taryn um, about picking out heavy duty, therefore reusable plastic items that can look almost as nice as glass, but uh, then no one has glass in their foot at the pool. So make sure you follow up on that, whoever asked about favorite poolside vessels. Um, Favorite behind the bar sunscreen? Hmm. Probably Neutrogena. They okay. make like a really good, like um, you can spray your back with it. It's great. So and they any, make it in a bunch different. I was about to say, what's, I would like to know this. Let's all answer this question. Well, not me, everybody else. <laughs> Preferred SPF. I'm a 30 girl. I got to get tan. Same. <laughs> I just want a kiss of sun. <laughs> but I don't. I don't want to be a lobster. <laughs> Bob Dennis, what are your? What's your SPF? Whatever uh, the sunscreen uh, uh, is, it should not uh, smell like coconut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It'll ruin your cocktail. It'll ruin your cocktail. You heard it here yes. first. Right. You heard it here first. All right, dude. Already two things down with this guy. No cucumber and no coconuts. You know, I love coconuts. I love coconuts, but not with, 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 ah, okay. okay. And everything okay. smells with coconut. You can't have uh, all the okay. coconut hanging in the air while you're drinking your kettle and botanical cucumber and mint vodka spritz. Things get things get messy at that point. Yeah, but it's, do uh, have when it's on your hands. Stories. You drink it, you smell the coconut, uh, no. Nah. This guy. <laughs> so no. Dennis, what's uh, your SPF? 30 and up, definitely. Uh, and no crazy things in there. I want clean product on my skin. Sorry, but uh, I really read the back label. Everybody should do that. I love that advice. I mean, you never know what people are putting in stuff at any given time, except for our friends at Cuddle One, because be, they tell us. Um, <laughs> you so, would be surprised. So we're collectively at least a 30 preferably a clean product that does not smell like coconut <laughs> that comes in a container that allows you to spray your back because you don't want that part getting burned then you can't sit, <laughs> sit up against the chair and nope. without lumbar support what is life you know <laughs> um here's the last pool related question that we have what do you do about spills in the pool you know weirdly that's not really happened yet for me <laughs> like lick like like I mean, there's chlorine in it usually. I think it'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably a spritz is okay, but if you yeah. drop a glass of red wine in it, yeah, yeah you have a problem. So uh, stick with the, the, the caravan spritz. I think that will <laughs> so, be okay. Yes. Good advice. Perfect if, answer, Bob. 
Yes, if you are prone to spilling things uh, and you're gonna be in a body of water, go pick you up some of these these babies because yeah. then no one will even know you spilled it. So or it's maybe fine. Like cups with lids, I don't know. Sippy cups, I'm down for a sippy cup. <laughs> no food in the pool, there's no food allowed no, in the pool. No, no food in the, that's no. weird. Don't put yeah. food in the pool, mm -hmm. that's not, that's not okay. Um, <laughs> If you are a particularly messy person who insists on drinking something that is a color, um, <laughs> I would suggest uh, sippy cups. I think that's our consensus from the panel. And if you're literally anyone else, just go get some of these because you can spill them wherever you want to. And they don't have any sugar in them, so they're not sticky or they don't bring ants. And they're clear, so like you can spill whatever you want to. And everybody's just going to be like, that's pool water. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. And then you've actually improved the pool because now it's going to have some like peach and orange blossom or grapefruit and rose essence. So everybody wins. Yeah. No coconut. Yeah. No coconut. No, no coconut. Uh, we actually have uh, Janae who's commented. She said she's laughing, laughing emojis. What's wrong with coconut? <laughs> Nothing. I'll be all. Not my favorite. She's not putting it on your skin. <laughs> Bob is not anti coconut, but not pro coconut sunscreen and joe you're you're anti-coconut ah i like it in curry but i don't like it otherwise <laughs> i'm real go. particular now with okay. you joe be Thank careful you, with the be careful with the coconut around this group you know, you're gonna get mixed reactions here um uh, well I am gonna start the thrilling process of wrapping up this show. We've had so much fun and I wanna make sure that these very busy people get back to their lives because if I don't make myself cut this thing off, I will stay here and talk to you all forever because I love all of you very much. Um, the first thing I want to do is thank all of you for joining us today to talk about Kettle One, Kettle One Botanical, pool parties, spritzes, all of the good stuff summer has to offer. Uh, and like Dave popped up here, um, Go over to Kettle and Botanical. Give them a little follow on Instagram. See what they're up to. They always are posting delicious Kettle and Botanical spritz recipes so you can get fun garnish inspiration and just like keep up with what's going on over there. I'm constantly pressuring Bob to drop a new uh, varietal. So you don't want to give that a follow oh. to see if that pressure works. Um, and if you had fun today, which if you didn't, uh, there's something wrong with you. Um, so go ahead and smash that like or love button. Give some love in the comments. Let all of these lovely people, let, th let them know that you enjoyed the show today. Um, and make sure you follow Portland Cocktail Week on Facebook and or YouTube, depending on what you like. You can follow both. Give yourself a little variety of where you, where you watch all the Portland Cocktail Week distance learning classes. Um, obviously, we have new classes all the time. And this is... Um, our last installment of the Botanical Spritz Society for right now. Uh, we do have an uh, Ask Me Anything with Joe and Taryn coming up on Sunday, uh, but we will be back with brand new Spritz Society content to get you through the rest of summer very soon. Uh, make sure you follow Portland Cocktail Week on Instagram because that's where we post all the things that we're about to do on here so then you know we're doing them. Uh, so you can join in on the fun. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you with uh, is a final reminder to head over to the Portland Cocktail Week Instagram page on Sunday to catch up with Joe and Taryn on their Ask Me Anything. If you have any pool party hosting, spritz making related questions for Joe and Taryn, send them on over to somebody on our team, drop them in the comments. Either way, we'll make sure that those get on the question list for Sunday. And keep an eye out for a newsletter on Sunday. I don't know if y'all remember when we, back when we started this Spritz Society, but we released a survey asking all of you, all of your thoughts and feelings on Kettle One and Kettle One Botanical. Well, now it's time to see how much you've learned about Kettle One and Kettle One Botanical. So we'll be releasing another survey and three lucky people who fill out that survey are gonna win a hundred dollar Visa gift card so that you can use it to enjoy summer, have a pool party, do something fun for yourself. So make sure you check out that newsletter on Sunday morning. Catch up with Joe and Taryn on the Portland Cocktail Week Instagram page Sunday afternoon and have a lovely Thursday. Once again, thank you to all of you. I love you very much. Thanks.